Hello everyone and welcome Simon here from the Wells of Wall Street. We're going to be talking today about the energy sector. Two of our favorite projects, Power Ledger and Energy Web Foundation's EWT token. Um, before we go into the charts of those, I just want to go through a couple of topics around energy. Why is blockchain so important and how can we decentralize ourselves and go to a peer-to-peer -peer system instead of uh, relying on wholesale application? And we'll go into right now as well in a second. Um, about what is going on with the prices, why are they so high, and how and why wholesale has such a grab on us. Before we do that, go, do go check out our previous videos as well. Let's get this one over to a thousand views, please, guys. Please do go watch that about the RTGS system, uh, basically the monetary system around the world being replaced by the ICO tokens and, and a few other things around blockchain. Absolutely mental numbers and information there. And go check out other ones as well. We cover a multitude of different projects and certainly some rabbit, rabbit hole topics as well as the projects themselves. Um, and let's go into this, guys. Well, first of all, here in the UK, our prices are rising all the time. Um, we are actually apparently uh, 154 out of 170 countries in terms of how expensive we are. So actually, we're not doing relatively too bad compared to um, other countries. Uh, but for sure, it's still feeling the pinch here in our general public. Um, we're seeing a rise in fuel prices. We are seeing a rise in interest rates, cost of living, cost of food, cost of water, everything you can possibly think of the government is throwing at us. This is probably the downfall of furlough payments and all of this through 2020 and probably to 2022 early stages. There's no doubt in my mind the government's always find a way to claw that back. Um, you know, it's all very well getting free money and, of course, great for survival. You know, a lot of people really needed that. Um, and it's great to see that, but do expect to be paying that back in some aspect in the years to come. And very interestingly here for the UK, how much does fuel really cost? Well, actually, um, it's very interesting to see that, of course, some of the cost comes from getting out of the ground and sending it to your petrol stations, your local petrol stations. Uh, but actually a lot of it as well is down to the taxation, um, but also not just from the duty of petrol and diesel, but also the tax on top of it. So if you think about the rough costs of 162.48 or £1.60-ish uh, per litre at the moment here in the UK, maybe a bit more, some places, some less. My point being is that um, actually... <laughs> Over, uh, around about a third of that comes from duty and then of course the 20% tax on top of that as well you're talking very much around um, a good near enough two-thirds coming from taxation duty tax all the same sodding thing right now that's not what people really think about they just see a narrative around the world and assume that that is the reason why that we have such high prices so we've got those elements to consider as well um, but also, I wanted to pinpoint a couple of other things in the energy as well. The energy sector is mental. And again, here in the UK, we have massive offshore wind farms. We have solar panel farms going up left, right and centre. And we are, have energy supplies, including my own, like Eon, boasting that we have 100% renewable sustainability. And yet the prices rise. Fortunately for myself, I have a fixed term uh, uh, in terms of rates for the next couple of years. But those that didn't are being faced with substantial rises up to a thousand, if not more pounds per year added to their energy bills. And you don't know, not enough people, in my opinion, do stand up to this and go, well, hang on a minute. How is this possible? And of course, if we don't have good light and we don't have good wind, we, of course, have to borrow some energy across the world. But then we don't get our energy from those guys. We get our energy from other places, including our own infrastructures here in the UK. So why is this still happening? Well, a lot of it is to do with wholesale market uh, purchasing, okay? These are basically the brokers that buy energy in advance, right? For a lower price or a higher price. And then that is passed along the channels to thus us, the users or the consumers of energy. Um, and we just basically take the brunt of it because we don't have any alternatives yet. 
The reason I say yet is because actually most of the actual answers are within our grasp and indeed able for us to do right now. It's just a question of education and also some elements of pulling together as communities, as individuals and as a worldwide unit. We have an opportunity for a centralised better energy system and a decentralised energy system as well. We're going to talk about it in a second but we do cover this quite a bit with the likes of Energy Web um, Foundation and Power Ledger as well. The aspect here of blockchain and a peer-to-peer -peer system essentially enables you to operate your own solar or generative infrastructure locally that has a peer-to-peer -peer system. What I mean by that is, for example, if you all have batteries in your neighborhood, let's say your next door neighbors or your flat apartment block or whatever it is, has a big generator on the top or it has one, you each have your own batteries uh, within the facilities. You can essentially obtain the solar power or however energy you do, whether it's heat pumps, air pumps, whatever it is to heat your, your energy uh, around the home or property. And you can then use excess energy and become a prosumer and sell this onto your own intricate grid. They call them macro grids, micro grids. I and mean, it's really interesting because, of course, as we see the costs rising significantly over and over again, uh, winter last year was obviously pretty damning anyway, but this year is absolutely disgusting here in the UK. And the governments are allowing it to happen. This is even worse. And like I said, sometimes you've got to sit there and stop complaining and blaming people and take initiative yourself take advantage yourselves of these things yes the government sends out some boost caps do you honestly think they're going to give this away for free we've seen this before they'll just add it again somewhere and they will force the new system into play loads of people going off grid apparently twenty-five thousand homes in the uk are already living off grid off grid doesn't mean you go and take your house into the woods and start farming yourselves and this that and the other what it means by off grid is mean taking yourself off the centralized system and becoming more independent however the now beautiful thing of blockchain and peer-to-peer -peer mechanisms both through web3 hotspots and the ability of macro systems means that you can also become what they call a prosumer any excess energy that you have stored in your battery you can sell to your neighbors to set to not only get you extra money which by the way is capped so that you don't get stupid people getting oh i'm gonna sell it for like five ten times much because the the demand's high, like people do on eBay and stuff when you want something. Or an Uber driver adds an extra £10 on there because you've already looked at it five minutes before and they know you desperately need a ride, so that adds more money to it. Um, it won't be done on that. It would just be done on a system that is fair. And you can have a choice whether you sell it at that level or even lower. So if you're thinking like, well, actually, I don't really need the money, but I'm going to help the neighbours out. And the neighbour goes, hey, guys, uh, we've run out of energy. Can you send us some, please? But it's not even like that, guys. Blockchain smart contracts elements, DIDs, means that this whole algorithm of autonomousness inside your home, including, like, for example, your Wi-Fi wa washing machine, everything IoT-based, basically, your kettle, your washing machine, could all turn on and do things based on algorithm and data of the energy algorithm around the world for example oh there's too many people using it i'm going to switch i'm going to switch myself on late at night or in the morning or whatever obviously depending on your schedule and when you need stuff by it needs to do that of course but what i mean is like if you're sat back like i am and i go well yeah i work from home now i don't really need to worry about oh i need to do the washing before i go to the office or anything like that anymore to get it out on the washing line it it can it can do it automatically based on the energy consumption, thus reducing emissions totally around the world and, and individually and making a better world of sustainability. It's mental. So you've got two great things about blockchain. You've got the energy consideration and you've got your bills consideration. Um, and, and like I said, adding extra money to your income from excess energy, other users being able to add if they are higher users, and this is great. This is brilliant because then you remove yourself from the grid. This is the conversation about the grid. Um, Beth Howe has put this brilliant um, thing together about all the different costs of heaters and stuff like this, how blockchain will help with this, how going off grid will help with this. And it's, it's all over the place, guys. If you look deep enough, some of these articles go back a few years, peer-to-peer -peer solar energy trading. 
Um, some aspects, like I said about centralization, Energy Web Foundation is working very heavily uh, with a lot of governments, as is Power Ledger, um, to integrate the existing energy systems that we have to pull together to make this new system. However, with centralization, you have the possible difficulty of things like CBDCs coming in the future, whereby, not saying it definitively, but let's say, for example, if you don't do as you're told, they could shut your systems off because you haven't done this, you haven't done that, you haven't paid this, you haven't done this. It's a dangerous aspect of potentially the central banking system and the centralized system, which is why I talk about as well the peer-to-peer -peer mechanism in a decentralized format as well, i.e. interconnected microgrids to be able to do this you need to have the education the knowledge to bring people together to understand this to put infrastructure in place of course that is of course regulatory in some aspects uh, because you can't just put uh, a generator in the middle of your um, estate or whatever because of course you know it could be flammable it could be um, misused it could be this that and the other so there is some aspects of you know interlacing with your communities your councils etc like that but the clear aspect of my point here um, is these solutions already available and it is literally down to lack of infrastructure, lack of education, lack of knowledge of this um, being available. Some do put their energy back into the grid, but that's still in a centralized format. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I want to take more power back, excuse the pun. Project Edge here, very interesting. Of course, we covered this quite a while back. Uh, Project Edge has been working very heavily around this. And look at this, roughly 67% of all power generated by US power plants is wasted in lost in the form of heat during transmission distribution. So let's get this straight. We're eradicating our world resources and still 67% of that is being wasted anyway. What are we doing to ourselves? And we wonder why our clouds are being sprayed left, right and centre with geoengineering. We wonder why we have to try and reduce the temperatures. We wonder why we can't breathe properly in this world. And yet 67% of it in one country, probably similar to other countries as well, are doing this to ourselves. What are we doing? What are we doing? So we need to start thinking about this more logically, guys, both as a worldwide situation and us as individuals and communities. We spend too much time blaming others, looking for answers elsewhere, or asking someone else to sort it out. When actually, instead of complaining about these energy bills, find the solutions. Work together to get the solutions in place. This is all here, ready for us to go. You just have to be a bit savvy, a bit clever, and bring people together. Because we don't actually need half of these things that have been basically prominent for decades upon decades, insinuating what prices we should and shouldn't be paying and being dictated to by other countries, politics, everything. Let's remove ourselves from this. Let's remove ourselves from this ridiculous system, this energy penetrative system that just simply is not sustainable any longer. It's time to wake up, smell the roses, and get involved in these kind of applications. Learn more about things like Energy Web Edge, Energy Demand and Generation Exchange, guys. These are all here. Power Ledger, Energy Web Foundation do obscene amounts of work right now trying to educate people, build knowledge, do more case studies, do more trials, especially in Australia. It's going mad at the moment with power systems. It's almost like that's the, that's the key trial guinea pig at the moment in Australia, and it's doing very well. And this will be interlaced with so many other places. Look at this, technology providers, Energy Web, Microsoft. It's all on here. Mondo, massive. We must think about this more. And it's my duty for this channel to not just talk about projects and prices and this and that, but understand what's coming. What is coming to our tables? But also, not just from an investment perspective, but to improve lives. I'm all about the environment, sustainability, improving lives, equality diversification i'm all about people being on a level par i'm sick and tired of people having to be in poverty having to be dictated to all the time we need to take the power back and it's in our hands to do so guys let's jump into the charts for ewt and power ledger very briefly switched overview energy web foundation is coming to a price someone always says to me like energy web is so expensive it's four dollars and i'm like well guys think about the energy sector as a whole you know trillions of dollars worth but also think about what is coming we just talked about a load of it 
right? Energy Red Foundation is very heavily interlaced with things like the European Commission and many other aspects around the world to improve the existing energy system and help people individually as well. So for me, this energy powerhouse is going to be phenomenally based value-wise in the future. It already hit a $23 mark back here in April um, last year, and I do anticipate this to be a fair good couple of hundred dollars worth in the next few years, in my opinion, based on the algorithms and based on what the energy sector is doing. Big goals for 2025 and especially the Agenda 30 program that the UN distributed over back in 2015 or 16, 150 plus countries signing this document about sustainability, diversification, all these things. And energy is a humongous part of this and so are Energy Web. These are all interlaced with the World Economic Forum uh, proactive goals. Okay, So for me, Energy Web is not necessarily cheap or expensive right now. It's just a beautiful opportunity to get into something that I believe is going to have extremely good traction in the years to come with the energy sector. It's up 2.5% on the week. It's still down on the, all the other trigger points of six months, three months. Understandably, the market overall is a mess um, and we have negative narratives around the world and we're in arguably a world recession still right now. So it's understandable, but it does not stop me personally. The RSIs are looking really strong, not as good as two, three days ago, but certainly still very good, still under the 40 bracket on the 14 day RSI and 28 days is still floating around 40. Yes, perhaps two days ago for me is probably a bit of a better time, but it's not far off. We're in this closing area of a, of a sell-off period in this red histogram you can see behind, and the MACD is indeed still in a bit of a bear mode as well. But it looks like it's going to stabilize and do a bit of sideways trading for a bit. But we do need to be considerate of the market and the narratives around the world. Just in case there are lower regions, I am indeed heavily interested in buying at lower regions than this at this particular point here, just literally bang on $4. It sounds silly to just be worrying about 15 or 10 cents, but that's very much where it has been um, already a couple of times quite recently, the lows of $4. So I have got um, a buy order in just under that because right now we are floating at $4.16. Um, I will be putting another one back at $4 and slightly under that as well. But hopefully we will see some sideways trading and a bit of an uptake of EWT. The other thing as well is the volumes aren't massive, but they're stabilizing. And that's really good in my opinion, that people are still very strong about this project, still understanding of this project. We of course have the staking mechanism that's really good for EWT on the staking pools. Go check out the videos of that previously. If you want a video of how to stake EWT, I should be able to do that tomorrow for you guys um, and get involved in that. The APR is not, uh, sorry, APY is not massive, but it's good. It's a good holding opportunity and free money at the end of the day, right? Um, so that's very much EWT's positions. What I'm trying to achieve with EWT purchasing wise uh, over the next few days, and we're going to have a quick look at Power Ledger as well. Another fantastic project. We did an AMA with uh, Jenny a while back. Absolutely brilliant conversation that was. I'll try and leave a link to it at the end of this one. Power Ledger is one that I've accumulated finally around these sort of areas. Um, I missed these high points, fortunately, in the sense that I was like, it's too high, I'll wait for it to come down. And I thought, oh my God, is it actually going to come down or not? And it did eventually come back down to these sort of 40, 35 cent regions. Really positive points to be looking at. I do have some buy orders back down here at around 35 uh, cents. And I also have some down here as well, back where we looked at here in October last year, around the 30 cents mark as well. That's not to say the project is dead or it's dying. It's just the market in general at the moment. Um, but it's beautiful opportunities for those that aren't involved in Power Ledger or haven't got a big bag of them. I don't have a huge bag. I'm accumulating it slowly, but I do see the massive potential of Power Ledger as I do with EWT as well. Um, don't consider it like a comparison in the sense like, oh, this is a cheaper version of EWT. Of course, they're both similar projects, but don't sit there and go, oh, this is like buying EWT like, like years ago. Um, think about it a bit more broader than that. Uh, just think about Power Ledger as it is, who they are, who works for them. Absolutely brilliant company. And I think it's going to do extremely well. I can't anticipate right now whether it's going to get to $5, $10, $20 like EWT has and there's loads of aspects behind that but what it does need to do is continue its great work in case studies and interlacing with the public and the government levels of the energy sector. So we've seen the second wave of the uh, the selling aspect here still in a bear mode it's quite a big gap which is why I've got the lower buy areas of 35 cents and 30 cents in there because I don't think we're fully over this yet 
um, and it is pulling down just based on longevity. I think people, some people just get bored after a period of time and they're like, oh no, it's not moving. I'm getting rid of it. I need the money, whatever it is. And they don't think about it in that way. But Power Ledger is slightly different to EW2 at the moment. It's still up on the six months. That is probably going to drag itself down a bit more anyway. But the week is showing a negative. Um, it's not huge, but the three months and the one months are still a bit of a concern for me. But not concerned to the fact that it is a great opportunity to be jumping in. So those are my two areas. And they literally are based on the fact of the fib retracement levels that I have historically here at those areas. Um, but we could potentially see some uplift here and maybe some triggering aspects of uh, support that we saw back here in January, February uh, markers here uh, around this sort of 42 cents. So we're not far off that mark still. It's good two, three cents. But this looks a bit jagged, right? But actually, we're talking about literally like five or 10 cents worth here in this in this bracket. So it's really actually doing some good stabilization work over this period of time. And it is currently testing these previous resistance areas on the way up in November last year and on the way down as well in December. So it's a really interesting area. That's why I've got the lower regions, but I'm also anticipating we might see some sideways trading before a bit of an uptake to test these higher regions again. So it's a bit of a limbo moment bit of a hard one to indicate but all you can do is literally take advantage of positions on both sides of the coin literally um, and see where we end up so you just got to manage the expectation you've got to manage um, your research and you've got to manage the the two possibilities so guys i'm going to wrap that up there hope you found this relatively interesting uh, these projects are fantastic we will do another one very soon on both these individually and i will show you the ewt staking mechanism as well but until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next energy video. Bye-bye.